Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the adventures of Lord Captain Wilbur. Very cool. Uh, last time we definitely came down here to squash a rebellion, which is super fun. Stars. Okay, so let's see what we're getting ourselves Sometimes into. You consult the appropriate treaties on Tactica Imperialis. And weigh every that step. looks like I, I shouldn't go that way. Your biggest cannon and save the day. Valve? Okay. Another valve here, but it doesn't matter. Overdex Rebel. Uh, it should show up if we have any loot on the map here. So let's just get exploring for a bit. Hello, everyone. Coming through. Ah, all levels from the upper duck down here to see us. Hello, sir. The sound of a heated discussion reverberates through the ship's bay. Lieutenant Avera Avilia Vent. Lieutenant Vent of the ship's enforcers is barring the path of a heavy built assault officer, assault unit officer. And judging by the expression and tone, the standoff has dragged on far for some time already as has now reached a boiling point. I have my orders to put an end to the unrest and purge this sector. You can take your orders and shove them. This is my deck and my sector. There are only three people who can watch in here without my express permission. The first officer, the rogue trader, and the emperor himself. So not all lessons fall on deaf ears. <laughs> not all of my lessons fall. Abelard mutters in a crabby approval. He does not clarify whether he means the lieutenant vent or the officer looming over her, or both. Your lordship, noticing you, the two officers, junior officers snap to attention and salute their subordinates following suit in a, mo a moment later. What's the situation? We encountered some locals on the way here. Their conduct was outrageous. Uh, they even try to throw things at us. I want to speak to the strikers. Oh, shit. I give him permission to open fire. We'll crush the siege of insurrection with full force. No, thank you. Uh, we know what the situation is. I want to speak to the strikers. Abelard's mouth twists, <laughs> but he restrains himself and says nothing. Right you are, Lord Captain. Allow me to wish you good luck. Hope gleams from Lieutenant Vent's eyes. Okay, but that didn't tell me where exactly these people were. Victory awaits! Ah, here we go. A dozen pairs of eyes stare apprehensively at you. The people before you are typical inhabitants of the lower decks. You take in their simple clothing, crude weapons, and faces that display wary levels of mutation. Ugh. From barely discernible to the strange and outright grotesque. Hello, sir. Rivet is his name. A whisper passes through the crowd and you detect a mixture of fear and astonishment and joy in their reactions. Finally, three people break away from the crowd, an elderly woman and two men. These must be the leaders. They bow clumsily before you. L Lord Captain, you have to, c you've come down to us. Tell me what is troubling you. What are you, why are you striking? Striking? This is news to us, your Lordship, says the tall, thin man in worker's garb. We're, all we're doing is asking questions, saying what we think. Shut up, Rivet, old woman snaps, uh, who turns her hostile dark eyes on you. Here's the deal, your lordship. Your demand damned officers are all over us down here. They say they're looking for cultists. One wrong word and they'll be reaching for their batons. If they want to punish someone, they turn off the heat to the whole bay for about a week at a time. God damn. Uh, so we get sick and freeze. In my clan, two little ones died of inflammation of their lungs. All because of those enforcers. The old woman spits on the floor and rubs the spit in with her toe. 
of a worn out shoe. Argenta does not interrupt the workers, but you see the sadness well in her eyes when the children's death are mentioned. She quietly whispers a requiem prayer and makes a sign over herself. It's all true. Vent is the only off enforcer officer who stood up for us. It's clear as day who the had the who had a mother from the lower decks and who grew up amidst amidships weird and has no fellow feeling towards us. The grim man with a scarred face throws up his arms. Your lordship, we are no villains here. We're honest workers, your servants. We're plotted to we're, we've plotted no disorder. We went on strike openly and now we're we've got the guns pointed at us. All we're doing is asking to be allowed to work in peace, follow without being harassed. Uh, the persecution started of nothing, you say? Apropos of nothing? Uh, I was told that one of you was found with the possession of a cultist amulet and that there were heretics hiding here. Abelard, what do you have to add? I authorize the use of all necessary measures to locate chaos worshippers hiding within this sector. The specific steps taken by the officers were not reported to me. Abelard frowns, clearly disgruntled at having to explain himself in workers' presence. Nonetheless, I am certain that their actions were justified. Cultists are no drunken Steve Dovers. I've never even heard that word. <laughs> Uh, they are the enemy and a threat to the ship. Neutralizing them demands decisive action. We were attacked on the way here. How do you explain that? Here's an explanation for you. The people have been pushed to their limit and now they're lashing out. As if we don't know why these people... Why these top deck units are being sent down here. Like the one... Uh... Like that one there that the lieutenant won't let pass. Our clams are all inside of the bays that are sealed, been sealed off. But the lower decks are big. I'm sure there are some people who would have had just about enough. We're getting it from all sides. The soldiers have encircled the ones who've risen up and the death squad has just arrived. It's no wonder folks are lashing out. Fair enough. Awareness test succeeded. Their words seem sincere to you. Their body language and glances traded between the, them reveal that the news of the attack has shocked them. Okay. I was told there was cultists here. A cultist amulet? What is that? <laughs> the Guga they found was on the dead drunkard. It was something evil. If it was something evil forbidden, we sure didn't know. The enforcers just said that they were looking for heretics among us and anyone obstructing their investigation would be punished. But how could there be heretics here? We know our people. We know our own people. There have been no new faces around. Definitely not. And if there were, we'd be the first to report them. As for this amulet or whatever, they're... They took it off a dead body. There's no cultist still breathing in our sector, that's for sure. But when that fight broke out, some enterprising folks looted the bodies. The boots they came The boots they came back with, nobody ever seen ever tree tread these decks and boots so fine. I can tell you that much. Uh seems to me like these cultists have better comrades than us. Oh yeah, those boots are real fine. Really were fine. And there was no harm in taking them, right? As for the amulet, it must have been pocketed by someone who didn't e know any better. We don't need any amulets around here. We all worship the Emperor and when we're working, we bow down before the machine spirits of the large and small transformers and the servo mat motor. The same way my grandfather was taught a hundred years ago by tech priests who came calling. Believe us, your lordship, 
We are people of faith. Naive children. Uh, <laughs> weren't you not, weren't you taught from an early age about the dangers of arch enemies creations? Oh, okay. That's just chaos. Uh, weren't you warned that the unfamiliar object could be one of them? We were told, Holy Sister, but it was a long ago. The last time we saw a confessor in our sector, it was just after I had one of my, my third little one. That is regrettable. You cannot lay the burden of leading a righteous life on the shoulders of the Holy Fathers. Uh, who will be, who will you blame when a beast crawls out of those amulets you stole from the heretics? The Holy Father who was not there or the scavenger who brought the evil down on him and his neighbors. What changes do you want? Would you look at this? The exalted Lord Captain himself is asking us beguile rats what we want. <laughs> well, here's what. We want to rein in your demand, damned enforcers to quit turning off the heat and to stop battering everything that moves. No, that's not it. We want the enforcers gone from here. We want them to be armed. Give us arms and we'll govern ourselves. We'll defend ourselves if these cultists do show their faces. I've been leader of my clan for 20 years now. Getting rid of these club wielding thugs can only improve things around here. You've gone too far, old man, says Stagger. Uh, they'll never let the maggots on the lower decks without the enforcers breathing down their necks. They probably even insist the enforcers on the upper decks, too. As for the weapons, what do we need them for? Before the first day's out, we'll have someone shooting their neighbor out of stupidity or drunkenness. We don't need that. If the enforcers stop hassling us, that'll be enough. In return, we'll find the scavengers who robbed the cultist bodies and we'll ta talk to them. Lower deck, one lower deck to another. Lower decker. If there are any more of these damned amulets out there, we'll hand them over to the enforcers ourselves. You speak for yourself and your clan, and I speak for me and mine. I don't want empty gestures, I want real change. They'll promise us the world now, but as soon as the, as the Anointed Ones turn his back, the Brutes will be on us even harder than before. All because we dared to speak out. Coercion. Spreading anarchy on the ship is the first step towards embracing chaos. Putting weapons in untrained hands would be even worse. There's more. What's more, the enforcers need to maintain oversight and order. Withdraw those demands, and I will consider the rest. Hmm. The tall worker's eyes dart between the argu two arguing leaders. Every few seconds, he opens his mouth as if he's planning to agree, but each time he falls silent, slipping simply making a few vague noises of approval. Thoughts, Abelard? Of course he's not going to like that. Uh, fine, I'll give you the order of the enforcers to be withdrawn from this sector, but you will have gi and you will be given weapons. Let's see how do you cope governing yourselves and what difference it makes. You have failed to convince me of your trustworthiness. The unrest ends now. Everyone in this involved will be eliminated. What are your thoughts, Abelard? The story about going scavenging for boots is ac and accidentally picking up a heretic heretical amulet does not convince me. These people were moments away from rebellion and possibly because minions of the arch enemy became becoming minions of the arch enemy. We must not give them what they want, even if they do inquire some incorrectly something incorrectly purely out of their own stupidity that was not meant that does not mean that they are tainted with corruption um uh oh uh what begins as petty thievery can turn into a far graver problem 
I've seen it before. Abelard's, Abelard's face darkens momentarily. In my second war, there was a sergeant in the Imperial Guard Regiment that was stationed nearby. The sergeant took an ordinary pocket knife from his a body of a heretic, and the whole unit lost their lives for it. Uh, Jesus Christ. When they finally managed to break them into the barracks, they found not a single survivor, only the pocket knife, which had grown through all of the rows which had grown through all the roads of bed like metal choking vine. What the fuck? So when it comes to scavenging, malcontents, striking, or whatever, they'll turn into next. Uh, my verdict is simple. Give them no quarter. I'm thinking about letting them govern themselves. That'd be interesting just from a gameplay perspective, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, fine. I'll give the order the, for the enforcers to withdraw from this sector and you will be given weapons. Let's see how you cope governing yourselves and what difference it makes. Profit factor lost one. That's fine. I just got two from that other thing. Avalard's face turns stony and he clenches his jaw. He looks at you, his narrowed eyes glittered with anger. Good riddance to the executioners. Freedom for F Depot 4. The old man woman raises her arms triumphantly. Cool. All hail the Lord Captain. All hail. You can count on us, Lord Captain. We'll find the cultist foulness and any of our people might have taken possession of it. That's it. Everybody goes home. Let's keep exploring a little bit. There might be something back here. No. No. It's about time. Well, that's uh, about it. That's all she wrote for that. Unless there's a door back here that I missed. Door I can't go through. Okay, we fair enough. The house stands in my way. Okay, back up to the bridge. Depot 4 is now... Oh. Stopping unexpectedly, Abelard... Imper impatient... Personally? Uh, <laughs> dismisses the unit to, uh, to stand at a distance and addressing your other companions, saying, I have an urgent matter to discuss with the Lord Captain. Please give us a moment. Uh... Abelard looks at you and the, the, his last vestiges of restraint vanish. Well, are you pleased with your investigation, Lord Captain? You kowtowed? I've never heard that word. To the disloyal rabble. Uh, worse still, you put weapons into their hands. Now we do not simply have an untrustworthy mob in the hold. We have a mob that is armed. Next time they decide to start an uprising, it will be far bloodier than this. Of course, uh, that is, of course, if they don't accidentally wipe themselves out first. Is that how you see the future of your helm of Von Valencia's protectorate? Uh, let's talk about the role in all this instead. There is some truth to your criticism. I should say so, Abelard heaves a sigh and he visibly relaxes. You simply needed to trust me. I would have handled the situation myself had you not decided to intervene, Abelard says, irrescably. Uh, remember Lord Captain Theodora? Do you think she ever set a slippered foot on the lower decks? No, she did not. Such matters were left to myself and the junior officers while she dedicated herself and her to her grand designs of the protectorate as any truth stat strategist a rogue ra traitor ought jesus christ um maybe theodora spent more time on trifling matters she wouldn't have wound up dead there's a new lord captain aboard this ship and i do not repeat her mistakes i will not repeat her mistakes 
I would be only too willing to trust my Seneschal with and not fill my head with such matters. The situation has spiraled out of control, out of your control, Abelard. Give me a reason why I should continue listening to your advice and trusting your judgment. Right now, I don't see any. God damn, just... No, maybe she wouldn't end up dead. Looks at you stunned and exhaust, exhales loud. Then he nods curtly. I commend your decis decisiveness, but I am uncomfortable in introducing new protocols in the midst of a crisis. And Avalard straightens to attention. I lost my temper, Lord Captain, and I believe I ought to explain myself. Avalard speaks slowly, the words not coming easily to him. The prosperity of the Von Valencius Protectorate is not just an empty phrase to me. I left the Imperial Navy for a chance to see it flourish. It was the most momentous decision of my life. I did it because I saw the Lord Captain Theodora's deeds in the sign, the sign of true greatness. Rogue traders do not simply forge new routes and capture worlds. They create order out of anarchy. That creative pulse, that creative impulse was entirely lacking during my time in the military. So I left behind everything I had known, everything my family had known. I come from a long line of officers. I embarked upon this incredibly reckless venture. Lord Captain Theodora entrusted me with all the concerns she had no time for. She would go off on her flagship for long periods to distant frontiers on scouting voyages and advancement and the advancements of entire protectorate uh, rested on my shoulders. Uh, and then suddenly everything ha that had been built over years and years began to quake, rattling like a flimsy hanger in a seismically active world. One of the senior officers betrayed us all. The rogue trader was killed and who knows what is happening on the planets. I tell you this honestly without fear of appearing weak. All this has come as a general grievous blow to me. I am not panicking or grieving because I can't allow, cannot allow myself to panic or grieve. I am duty-bound to aid the new rogue trader, to aid you, to find your footing as quickly as possible, and to do that, I must insulate you from problems that in the past have been dealt with by tired and testless procedures, tried and tested procedures set out in the ship's regulations, procedures that were established long ago and functioned smoothly for decades cannot suddenly be deemed access to requirements. Theodore trusted, uh, trusted in established procedures and she died. I won't make the same mistake. That's weird. I understand, but you need to learn how to respect me as your Lord Captain and Rogue Trader. Accept it and it <laughs> accept it and start living in the new world, a world where Theodora is gone and where you and I have new decisions to make. Uh, the prosperity of the Von Valenza Protectia is just as important to me. You're the only person who comprehensive knowledge of how things are run on this ship. I think the future in the future, I will follow your recommendations. I value what Theodore created and I trust that this situation is an abrasion on the ship, otherwise smooth operations. Since the established procedures are working, I see no reason to change them. I've seen plenty of sentiment and handwriting, hand wringing in recent days, but very little competence. I have no plans to rely on your judgment. Jesus Christ, or your procedures. Uh, let's see, which one do I want? She was dead, I won't make her mistake again. Stop living in the past. I need you to learn how to respect me. Accept it and move on. Solemnly incline inclines his head. 
Yes, Lord Captain. After a moment of silence, he adds, looking at you with interest, your resolve is admirable and demonstrates strong leadership. I shall remember this moment should my old habits ever begin to creep back in. And now, please, let us leave the lower decks. If the rogue trader desires to stretch his legs, there are far more suitable places. I won't tolerate weakness. Okay, out we go. Okay, back at the bridge. Now that that's all taken care of, can I level everyone up? Okay, let's see here. Level up. Choose an ability. Okay, here we go. Get back in the fight. The officer encourages an ally who immediately recovers from burning, bleeding, toxic, and stunned effects. Interesting. The target is under the effect of the voice of command. They also gain plus temporary wounds. Oh, my willpower is... Not that great, so... Uh, the officer increases the ally's resolve uh, by the officer's resolve divided by two plus two. So that would be six, right? Um, until the end of combat. If the target is under the effects of the voice of command, they will uh, start their next turn with plus one additional action points. Ooh, that's cool. Move, 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 move. Uh, the officer immediately grants an ally additional movement points equal to fellowship bonus. Ooh. Wait, 65? <laughs> oh, fellowship bonus. Hold on, what's our fellowship bonus? Plus six. Oh, I can just give them six movement points? If the target is under the effect of voice command, it ignores attacks of opportunity until the end of the commander uh, officer's turn. Wow. That's probably the one, not gonna lie. This one, this ability can only target allies who have enemies adjacent to them. Uh, until the start of the officer's next turn, all melee attacks against the attacks made by the target deal additional damage equal to officer's fellow bone so three multiplied by the number of enemies adjacent to the target when this ability is used oh okay i only have one melee guy right now so that's not that much of a concern uh, if the target is under the voice command, they immediately make an attack of opportunity against the adjacent enemy, targeting the one with the lowest remaining wounds. Take aim. The target's next attack will ignore cover and will have double the effective distance. Ooh, that's good. Uh, if the target is under the effect of voice of command, this attack will ignore enemy dodge. Additionally, the uh, damage from this attack can't be reduced by below 3 times 6 is 12, plus 30 is 45% for any reason. Noise. Okay. That's pretty good. I think the movement one is probably what I'm going to take. And then take aim seems like a good... Oh, but that ignores cover is so good. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the ignore cover. And then... I have chain weapon expert. I already have this feature. Oh. I'm proficient in bolter weapons? Really? Oh. Features needed. I need that. Okay. Uh, plus two movement points is good. Parry. Parry is super good. I have a 50% parry. That would make it 65, which is good. Last weapon expert. Nimble. 10% chance to dodge. Just take that from 70. That's pretty good. 
power weapon expert. Um, solid projectile weapons. It will not die. Increase wounds by half of the character's level rounded up. So I can just get... So I'm level 7. 7. So I should get quite a bit. It put me over 30. Meta weapon proficiency. Plasma weapon, bolter weapon proficiency, flame weapon proficiency. All these weapon proficiencies, dude. Uh, characteristic training. Advanced stuff. A noble servant gains plus two movement points every turn. You can... You kill it. If the servant kills the target... If the servant kills the target that the noble dealt damage to in the last turn, the noble gains one AP next turn. That's cool. Uh, if the servant has less than 30% maximum wounds, the noble can use you serve me once more in battle. Okay. Designate a new servant and removing the effect of the previous one. That's pretty good. So if my guy goes down, I can swap my buffs to another character. I think I'll take that. The noble cannot designate a character who's already been their servant this combat. Interesting. I think I will take that. And then we got Cassia. Uh, you have the same amount of... Oh, no, you have a lot more psychic powers, eh? A glimpse of fate. Target gains plus five times navigator's uh, willpower points, which is huge. I've been pumping up that willpower, that's for sure. Uh, increases hit chance on their next attack, dodge on their next dodge, and resistance to their next resistance test. <laughs> Each of those bonuses disappear independently from each other after being successfully applied. That's pretty good. That's just like... It'll up her shit. Ups her next attack, gets her next dodge, and they don't disappear until they're used? That's pretty good. Oh, and I can use it on other people. It's not just a self buff. Interesting. Reveal the light. Target ally gains plus four times willpower to their willpower and toughness until the end of combat. That's all right. Held in my gaze. Uh, the navigator deals uh, bonus damage uh, to an enemy. The enemy must try must pass a willpower resistance test or become immobilized until the start of the navigator's next turn. Ooh, that's pretty good. They take damage and... Hold on, let me do some math. <laughs> so one plus two times willpower bonus. My willpower bonus is... Six. So it'll be six times two is twelve, plus one, thirteen, up to... Uh... Six times four. Okay, yeah, that's way higher. That's a damage. An enemy must place. Okay, I think I'll take that. That sounds really good. Waking nightmare. All enemies within four radius cell circle suffer a penalty to their willpower and toughness till the end of combat. Uh, I think I'll just take the hell of my gaze. I think that one in the. Uh, Glimpse of Fate are really good. I think those are going to be my next two things here. Now, give her more movement speed. Give her more deflection. She's sitting at 50. Oh, look at all this shit. Uh... What is she? She's a officer, right? Yeah, she's an officer. Did I have all this shit? I don't even know. <laughs> Eye of Oblivion. Mastery of Time. Whenever the creature in combat gains an extra turn, the navigator gains a stacking plus five willpower 
until the end of the that's really good just because I have two people giving extra turns to people which will give me 10 per round basically which is pretty fucking fantastic I think I will take that thank you all right soldier what do we got here I can't upgrade my ballistic skill Womp womp. Jelly, perception, strength, willpower. Willpower is at 5. Perception of 40. Strength. Agility. Why does it recommend agility? Just for initiative and jo dodge? Oh, does it increase dodge? By 3%. And demolitions. Yeah, let's go with that. Um. 10% armor penetration. I think I'll give her swift movement. Let's actually scroll down to the bottom and see if there's specific stuff here. Yeah, I don't know why all this shit is at the bottom. This is all the cool shit. Damn it. All enemies in the area effect of war him and furious recital gain one stack of disturbed effect. Enemies that are adjacent to the devotee gain two stacks of disturbed instead. Also, all demons in the area of effect suffer damage equal to the momentum restored to the devotee while using this ability. Dev devotee and her uh, allies in the area of effect of that damage for single shots, attacks of opportunity for one round. That's cool. That's just a straight damage buff to everyone. Oh, what's my willpower? Three. Three divided by two. Round it up is, you know, two. I don't know if it is rounded up, but hey, that's more. Maybe I should start pumping willpower now. Now that I know that. Let's see, operative here, precision attack, precise attack. Uh, for the next attack against a target affected by an exploit, the target's cover efficiency will be reduced. This attack may have... Oh, sorry. Uh, five perception stacks of exploit. Wow. That's cool. So the more exploit charges I can get on someone, the better that attack is. Uh, until the operator's next turn, their allies attacks... Also remove exploits and deal int damage. Intelligence bonus for more damage. Her intelligence isn't that high, unfortunately. If we go, we can put, oh, we can't put more into intelligence. Logic or tech use. Um, perfect shot. Intimidation. Operative's next non-area of attack inflicts the intimidated effect on the first hit target hit by the attack and all enemies within a five cell radius of that attack target. Damage dealt. Her perception, her perception is really good, actually. I think that's the one I might take. Uh, damage dealt by is reduced by until the da, 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 da. This negative effect is doubled for enemies less than armor. That percentage armor. That sounds pretty good. Now let's see here. Tech use, logic, awareness is 60 already medicaid i could give i think i'll take awareness yeah and then abelard my friend oh uh, hold on Um, so here we go. 
weapon skill, definitely. Easy pick there. And then... Can I... Ooh. Gain no melee superiority bonus against this character. Interesting. Swift movements, dueling mastery. I put it up to 95%. He never gets hit by fucking uh, melee attacks, which would be pretty cool. Let's take a look at his skills down here. Do not falter. <clears throat> the all allies affected for brace for impact do not suffer negative effects or melee superiority for the entire combat. Melee superiority. In melee combat, any target surrounded by more allies than enemies receives a 10 plus weapon skill bonus. Ooh, yeah. So that actually would be good to have on him up here, the uh, combat master. Because he's always going to be surrounded by people. So that's good to have. And we're good. All right, and that's everybody's stuff here. Cool. Let's get back into the Milky Way. Let's go down here. Begin scan. There is something. The prison planetoid. Take in everyone. We're all going in. And here we are. Everybody coming out. Very cool looking. Oh, there is a person here. Excuse me, pilot. Halt! I noticed something. What did you notice? Come in, come in, escort. This is Captain Vargas. Or, escort, please come in. Pilot Raquel. Raquel? Uh, the pale young woman looks at you with a mixture of hope and disbelief swirling in her eyes. Uh, you notice her hands trembling as she clutches her weapon. Who are you? Did you come from this planet? Did you come from the planet? Are you reinforcements? Saint's teeth, I thought you'd never come. Um, I have no time for the long-winded talks. I'm looking for a man. What happened here? There's been a prison riot on the planetoid. Sadly... It has been led by the prison warden himself. An honorable... The honorable... Ath Anagatha? Anagathon? Uh... Castigela. <laughs> These names. Uh, we have allied... He has allied himself with the rabble that he himself was supposed to watch and declared Rykephilia to be independent of the authority of the system's lawful governor. I came here as a shuttle pilot alongside the honorable Winterscale. Oh. Son of Caglios Winterscale, rogue traitor, vanquisher of Xenos, forever triumphed, <laughs> triumphant over the enemies of humanity. She details and root and nurking every word from her overlord's title. Uh, young lady, Lord, young Lord Winterscale wished to speak with the Lord personally, so he put an end to his lawless treason. So he could put an end to a lawless treason. He and his escorts went ahead, and she grows paler. I haven't been able to contact them over Vox in a very long time now. Uh, Abelard mutters, stroking his beard. One of his distant, younger offspring. Yes, that's as much as I know about him. Uh, which means he hasn't 
distinguished himself in any meaningful way. Vanya, <laughs> Eva Young, I don't even know, winter scale, uh, has made several diplomatic visits to Iraq 5 on behalf of his father, road trader winter scale. Uh, the great regent would not have granted entry to someone dishonorable, which means whatever happened in the trouble in this terrible Maladorus place. We must aid the man of noble blood. Of this man of noble blood. Um, Warden himself is spearheading the riot. Yes, yeah, she bites her lip. No one expected this. Master Castillo, uh is a nobleman from a respected governor house and a vessel of House Winterscale. All of a sudden, he proclaimed that the planet was now his personal domain, that the prisoners were his subjects, and that he would never bow to anyone ever again. It's pure heresy. And I take it they're looking forward to a diet of sand and gravel? What kind of madman would start a revolt on a barren rock? Uh, why would young Winterscale have felt the need to parlay with the dissonance? She sighs quietly. It's a personal matter. Uh, the seditious Warren seditious Warren Warden is his childhood friend. Oh, when my lord heard about the riot, the news saddened him so greatly that he rushed here without delay in hopes of bringing his old friend to his senses, no doubt. First time win a scale in my memory who prefers to talk first rather than shoot and slash. She smiles faintly. Young Lord Winterscale is not his father's shadow. If he is determined to save his friend, he won't back down. I pray to the throne that he is alive and well. He's been gone for such a long time, and I really don't like this place. Cassia frowns in confusion. Theobald, Theobald excluded his wife and only son on the mere suspicion of treason against House Celio. So why did the noble rush to save someone who had barely had betrayed his house? Do bonds of friendship give one the right to make inexcusable mistakes? Uh, I'm looking for a man. The Inquisitor, is he here? Unless it's one of the prisoner guards, it is seems unlikely. There is no shuttles in working order other than yours and mine. There is nothing else anyone could have used to reach this planet. Uh, tell me about the planetoid. Oh, okay. Uh, the only settlement uh, is a penal colony. The prisoners work in the mines and doomed quarries, domed quarries. They mine sulfur, serumin dust, serum dust, and sand, which is then melted, melted down a rather nondescript place, or so it was prior to the current events. Okay. Uh, is there anyone, anything else I shouldn't be appraised of before I set out? Some of the rebels have holed up in the barracks. I don't know how many, but given this is the only way through to where the negotiations are talking are taking place, I would expect heavy resistance. Please take caution, your lordship. Lord Winterscale's guards mind the entrance so that the rebels couldn't get to the shuttles. I have no more questions. I, you may exclude yourself, pirate. <laughs> Pilot. Pilot. God damn. The moment freezes in a moment before he asking hesitantly. Your lordship, if I may have a minute of your time, I would ever... I wouldn't ever have dared to trouble you with a personal matter, but in this situation, in any case, uh, have you been to the capital of Regenmire yet? I wanted to ask if you saw the man there, a communications officer named Jasper. Uh, I have not been there yet and know nothing of the officer's fate. 
That's a shame. May the Emperor guide keep that full from harm. Thank you for your time, Lordship. She bows, and you can tell the desperation in her eyes is exhausted and frightened. Exhausted, frightened, and wishes to be off this planetoid as soon as possible. Well, I think I'm going to call it there for today. Oh, look, he found a trap. Disarm that trap, go in the gate, take a look inside. I'm going to call it there for today. It was a good, good episode. Got to level everyone up, got to take care of a, a little uh, hiccup on the ship. And next time we're going to go see what this prison planet has to offer. I'll see you in the next one.